Hello, this is Dr. Kornman. We're going to go through a video and animation of an anterior cervical decompression infusion at C67. Here you see a side view x-ray, a lateral x-ray, where there's an angulation, and here you see the MRI with the herniation at the base of the spine. This is a normal level transversely, and the next picture will be the herniated disc where you see it's compressing both the cord as well as the two holes the nerves exit. We first start with a small transverse incision on the side of the neck, and we dissect directly onto the anterior part of the neck. We put in these two small distraction pins called caspar pins that allows us to pull the vertebra apart to its normal height. Typically, these vertebra have collapsed at least halfway. This is a picture of what the annulus itself looks like in a live video. You can see this little pin field going into the tear. That tear obviously should be attached to that vertebra, but this patient has torn off their annulus. We then take off the anterior aspect of the annulus, and this video depicts how it's done in a simple manner, and we'll see how we do it using a typical 11 blade. Here's the little tiny scalpel that goes in and removes this annulus. The nucleus is missing in this patient. It had actually dissolved away and the rest of it went to the back of the neck, compressing the nerves. Here we see a small tool removing this portion of the annulus. We then remove the spurs on the front portion of the neck so we can get the two vertebra parallel and have a good spot to dock our plate. In addition, it allows us to be able to know the depth of the graft that we need. Here we see a burr taking off these spurs. Once we have the spurs in the front removed, we then need to remove the spurs that occur within the disc itself. And we see this little Dremel type device, the burr, removing that bone. And here we see a live version of the same thing where the burr actually takes the spur off the bone and we need to have the end plates parallel because the end plates in a typical cervical vertebra have some curve to them. And in order to be accepting of a good placement of a graft, we have to take these end plates down. We then curette the cartilage that sits on each end plate. And here we see the curette taking off this cartilage. This cartilage itself prevents bony fusion and must be thoroughly removed to prepare the end plates to accept the bone graft. In addition, the cartilage hides the bone spurs that project into the back of the canal, and we want to have those removed. So here we see removal of that cartilage using a pituitary. We then work on the back spurs that are projecting into the canal, and we use a small tool called a kerosene as well as a curette. The uncovertebral joints are the areas of the bone that create the spurs that compress the nerves, and here you see them removed with a kerosene. The kerosene will remove these and make more room for the nerve, which you can see in the background there. You can also remove the spurs with a high-speed burr, as we see here, and this thins down those spurs enough that you can easily pull them into the disc space using a small up-angle curette. Also, we see the end plate being parallelized. Here's the finished product, so to speak. We irrigate to make sure we wash out any debris. And then we check for the height of the graft that's necessary. And we'll use this little device you'll see being pushed in there. It expands the vertebra. It's not perfectly ready yet, so a little more trim and a little more parallelization. And then we'll put that spacer in, and you'll see the spacer fits quite nicely. We know we're ready for the graft. We prepare the graft. It could be an autograft from the patient themselves or an allograft. In this case, we'll use an autograft. This is a device that measures the depth of the hole, and then what we'll do is take a graft as depicted in this animation and place it between the two vertebra. Here we see a graft with a little purple on it. I actually dye the front of the graft purple to keep a good spot on it, and we place it within the disc space. That was the initial impaction. Then we do our final impaction. And this is how a graft should look. It should be perfectly interdigitated between the two vertebra and fit quite nicely, as you see. We then take a small titanium plate, and that plate will be put on the front to cover this graft, to stabilize it, 
and to allow the patient to get out of a collar much more quickly than normally. These green screws that you see look to be quite big, but they're actually small. There's significant magnification from the microscope that makes these screws look larger than they really are. Once the screws are placed, then we tighten down the swedge screw, which attaches the screws to the plate itself, and that's that crosshatch screw you see in the center. We'll shortly tighten that, and there we tighten those screws to swedge them down. That is the post-operative x-ray on a front to back view and a side view, noting the position of the plate and the incorporation of the graft. Thank you for your attention.